Thank you very much. I'm very excited to be here. Frank, thank you for inviting me. It's a great opportunity for me. And uh, there's another reason to celebrate because this is the anniversary of the 50th, 50th uh, year of uh, German and Israeli uh, diplomacy. So we are celebrating this year and quite a few uh, visits from German Bundestag to Israel, to the Knesset, and from the Knesset to the German Bundestag, and, and so on. As, one, as, as, one, as was mentioned, I'm a, a member of the Labour Party, which right now we are in the opposition. Uh, it's, I think it's important to, uh, uh, to say that. The Labour Party in the Israeli politics is, is seen as a center-left uh, party. Uh, and as was mentioned before, I joined the politics in the previous uh, Knesset. In the, the Knesset is the Israeli parliament, who, who doesn't know. Uh, so right now we are the 20th Knesset. I joined uh, three and a half years ago in the uh, uh, previous one, and uh, relatively in an elderly uh, age. And as was mentioned before, before I joined the Knesset, uh, or I joined politics, I spent my life in three diff different areas. So the first one was the Israeli IDF. As was mentioned, I was the commander of the Israeli Special Forces. Uh, but I was all, all also participated in the negotiations with the Palestinians regarding the first agreement with the Palestinians. It, it was called Gaza and Jericho first. And then after I participated in the uh, peace negotiations with uh, Jordan, uh, both under uh, late Prime Minister Rabin. And the reason I was asked to join the, uh, the IDF uh, committee in those negotiations was because I had an academic background. As mentioned, I, uh, my master thesis is, uh, was related. I wrote it in the late 80s, many years ago. And it was, uh, the subject was uh, future security agreements with Syria. Unfortunately, till today, nothing happens with, with my uh, uh, work, as, you, as we all know, and maybe to the contrary. So this was one part. The second part, uh, I was uh, involved in the Israeli high-tech uh, industry, mainly in the medical field, specifically in the cardiology field. And the third uh, part, uh, I initiated an NGO that uh, is still called Acharai, which means follow me, which tries to try to uh, uh, contact with the Israeli youth, youngsters, in the per periphery, whether it's a geographical periphery or a social economic periphery, and try to uh, connect these young youngsters to the main Zionist values, which actually the main Zionist values are, uh, most of them are universal values re regarding uh, democracy, regarding uh, seeing ourselves not only personally, but as a part of a group that we should take part and sometimes take responsibility on the group around us. And uh, by that, uh, strengthen the connection be between youngsters and, uh, and the nation itself. And uh, I began with one group of 15 kids uh, in one of the suburbs of Tel Aviv uh, 15 years ago. And when I left, when I joined politics, I decided to leave this NGO because I, I think that NGOs should be out of politics. Uh, we had more than 200 groups, uh, including uh, Israeli Jews, Israeli Druze, Israeli uh, Arabs, uh, Muslims, and uh, all kinds of groups, different groups. Uh, and uh, it, it became one of the biggest uh, youth organizations in Israel. And one of the speakers, or maybe not more than one of the speakers be before me, uh, talked about how do we give a better uh, chance and a better, uh, a better chance in society uh, to people that are, as we say in Hebrew, not close to, our, to the main plate. 
And I, I believe that through education in Israel, in, in Israel because uh, uh, military uh, service is mandatory, uh, we can use uh, military service in order to uh, uh, strengthen the, the, the ability of those uh, youngsters to take part of the, in the civil uh, life after the uh, military service in Israel. So this is regarding my background. The, the reason I, I decided to join politics was be, because I felt that Israel is not going to the right direction, not regarding its relationships with the Palestinians and with the Arab world, and also not regarding its internal social economic issues. I don't know how much you are familiar with Israel, but Israel has a very strong uh, economy. I think it's one of the countries that passed the 2008, uh, 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 2008 crisis, uh, passed it very good. Until today, Israel uh, has a very good economy. On the other hand, the gaps between rich and poor are getting wider and wider, cost of living, cost of housing, and so on. So, uh, and, and, and the wealth of the country does not get in the end of the day or in the end of the year to the people. So these two uh, reasons, main reasons, uh, convince me that I must uh, uh, abandon, if I may say so, my uh, nice life and jump into the sea or some say, call it swamp of politics. So I did that in order to try and uh, be part of the team that will make a change in Israel. And we are on our way. Still in the opposition, well, but I'm, I believe that we'll uh, get there. So if I'm uh, jumping to uh, the situation right now in Israel, the situation is very sensitive. Uh, terror is flooding the country. Again, every now and then we have uh, waves of terror. Right now, we are in, uh, in the la last uh, three months, we are in, in a new type of uh, uh, wave of terror. In the last three months, 22 Israelis were killed, much more injured. Uh, basically, uh, the, the, the type of terror uh, acts right now are stabbing by knives. Uh, some of them are uh, running over uh, people with cars, and uh, on, only a, a small part of it shooting as well. We just said two days ago, uh, two people uh, injured from uh, shooting. Uh, if I'll take, just for example, the month of November. So in the month of, no of November, we had only six days with no terrorist attacks. So I don't know how much you can uh, feel and understand that the terror is on a day-to-day -day basis and actually every citizen, no matter what his or her political uh, uh, belief, feels under great stress. And families do not feel uh, con uh, confident that if they're sending their uh, children to school or to kindergarten, they will come back safe and so on and so on. And you are walking in the street and you are looking behind if someone is going to uh, stab you. And of course, the, uh, to each coin there are at least two, two sides. This is the Israeli uh, side of the coin, and of course I'm representing the Israeli uh, side of the, the coin. But uh, the reason for that, or the main reason for that, is that there is an absence of a political solution. Uh, the Palestinian side, uh, the Palestinian people do not see uh, ahead of them uh, a political solution. The Israelis do not see a political uh, solution. And uh, from, an, from uh, uh, an Israeli point of view, uh, we are uh, moving towards uh, one state for two nations. And one state for two nations means, in the end of the day, it means the end of Zionism. And the purpose of Zionism was that Israel will be the homeland for the Jewish people. And in order to be the homeland for the Jewish people, we need two things. First of, first of all, a clear Jewish majority. And second, we need, uh, if we want to be part of the Western world, we, we need to have a democracy. And a democracy means, in the end of the day, that all people, all human beings in the borders of the country have equal rights. 
That's why, from an Israeli uh, interest, we must separate from the Palestinians. And again, I'm presenting the Israeli point of view. Of course, the result will be two states for two nations. But even if I'm looking only from our side, this is our interest in order to keep uh, 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 the, the, the vision of Zionism, we must separate from the Palestinians. The issue is that all kinds of uh, polls show that uh, almost 80% of the uh, citizens of Israel would like to see a two-state solution, but most of them do not believe it is feasible. And they do not believe that it's feasible because several reasons. And, 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 and again, it's not a question of reason because as we all know, feelings are not, even if they are not rational, they are feelings. So the first thing, Israelis do not feel, or Israel feel, Israelis feel insecure. And when I'm looking at the, at the broader uh, image, what's going on in the Middle East, and uh, we all know uh, the Muslim state, ISIS, and uh, the turmoil in the, Arab, uh, in the Arab world, and the, and the war between Sunni and Shiites. And it began quite far from uh, our borders in northern Iraq, and then it got to, to uh, uh, civil war in uh, Syria and it gets closer to and closer to us. And the, and, and the citizen in Israel asks himself, what happens if tomorrow ISIS will get to the West Bank and, get, and, 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 and take control on what's going on in the West Bank? Are we able to or should we uh, reach a certain agreement with the Palestinians today and a year from now or five years from now, ISIS will be there? And ISIS, cells of ISIS are already in the West Bank, and cells of ISIS are already small cells, are all also in Israel itself. Uh, in Israel, we have 20% of the population in Israel. Between the green li lines, 20% of the population is non-Jewish. Most of them are Muslims. And, 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 and we have some uh, few ISIS cells. So the, the, the man or the woman on the street, when you're talking with him or with her, they're in great fear and great stress. And they say, well, we, 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 cannot, uh, we cannot trust anyone around us. So this is one issue. The second issue is, do we have a partner? And we all know you need two for a tango. So one part is our part. And that's why I joined politics, in order, in order that on our part there will be someone that would like to uh, dance tango with the other side. But the question is whether or not we have today a partner on the other side. Because uh, as you know, in order to reach an agreement, such an agreement, the two sides has to do great compromises, strategic compromises. And President uh, Abbas, he's 80 years old, uh, the last time there were free elections in, uh, it was in, uh, in, Par in, in the West Bank and Gaza. Uh, in Gaza, the Hamas took, uh, won the elections and, and uh, less than a year later, they threw uh, from the roofs of uh, Gaza the Fatah uh, representative and took control on, on, on uh, Gaza. And the question is, even if we'll, uh, uh, we'll uh, reach an agreement with President Abbas, uh, how much, how long it will, uh, it will last? So these are, these are the main issues that uh, disturbs, if I'm, I may say so, disturb the average Israeli uh, person on the street. Mr. Lorenz talked about the watch and the time, and the importance of time. I believe that any, uh, any uh, process between Israel and Pal the Palestinians will take time, will take at least five years. Why five years? Because a part of the negotiations, we have to uh, resettle and move parts of the West Bank 
swap territories. Part of the West Bank will be part of Israel, and part of Israel will be part of the West Bank. And in order to do that, we have to uh, resettle at least 100,000 uh, Israelis. This process, if it goes well, it will take five years. Maybe it will take more. And in a way, it's, it's, at least from a theoretical point of view, and also from a practical point of view, it's not so important if the complete agreement will be signed on the first day or on the day before last. Because I believe that quite a few cards, most of the cards are in our hands, are in Israel's hands. And that's why I think that we can begin a process taking into consideration the two issues that disturb the Israeli public. First of all, well, as I said, is security, and the second is whether or not uh, we have a, a partner on the other side, and uh, begin a process that will begin the separation. And uh, a few weeks ago, I came out uh, with an uh, initiative that says that uh, in order to begin those five year of separations, I don't think we need a partner. I don't think we have to begin with negotiations. Of course, if there is a partner and if negotiations are going on, it's great. But assuming this is not going, this is not going to happen in the next uh, uh, couple of years, it doesn't say that we do not do anything. And I believe that, that we have to uh, begin the separation. I came with a, with a it's not a plan, it's a, a more guidelines. I, I can give a, if someone is interested in, in the details later on. But basically I say there are four steps that we can do, make immediately. The first step is to stop building out of the main Jewish blocks in the West Bank. Even uh, our Prime Minister Netanyahu says in the, in, the, in the far future, there will be two states. We will be here and the Palestinians will be there. So let's decide that from today, or not from today, from tomorrow, we are start building more settlements over there where, where will be the Palestinian uh, part. The second point, the second point is uh, legislate uh, a bill in the Knesset that says that any settler that lives in the West Bank out of the main blocks, if he or she will receive compensation, they will uh, willingly uh, uh, re be resettled and move their home from uh, those uh, isolated settlements in the West Bank into Israel. And again, in the first stage, only willingly. Uh, polls that were done show that uh, about 30% of the settlers would take such a deal today. So why not do it? Again, nothing in force. First stage, we do it uh, willingly. The third, uh, the third thing that we uh, can do and should do, again, I don't know how much you are familiar with, but according to the Oslo Agreement, uh, or the Oslo parameters between Israel and, and uh, Palestine, the West Bank is divided to three types of areas, A, B, and C. Areas B are areas that the civil responsibility is Palestinian and the security responsibility is Israeli. Area C, they are the biggest part of the West Bank, both responsibilities are Israeli. So the third point is let's enlarge areas B that will include a great deal of area C in order that the Palestinians, their uh, responsibility, their civil responsibility will be much greater than today. And still, from an Israeli point of view, the security responsibility stays in our hands. And the fourth uh, step regarding Gaza. Uh, I'm, I, again, I don't know how much you're familiar with, but in, in uh, the summer of 2014, we had uh, a, a war between Hamas and uh, Israel. And during this, uh, this summer, the Euro European Union came twice with a declaration that the long-term solution in Gaza should be, on the one hand, disarmament, and on the other hand, development, including deep water harbor and airport and so on, so, so that 
the Palestinians in, in Gaza will feel that they are not uh, living in a, in a chain closed by Israel in Egypt. So this is the vision. So why not, uh, and, and I believe that this vision, Egypt, Israel and Egypt and Saudi Arabia and Jordan, the Palestinian Authority and maybe other uh, countries in the Middle East uh, would like to see this uh, becoming true. And as I mentioned, Europe al already declared that. So not, why not go all those countries in the region with, with the European Union and with the US to the, to, to, to the Security Council in the UN and begin with the uh, international uh, international announcement by the UN, by the Security Council, that the vision should be demilitarizing on the one hand, and on the other hand, uh, development. I think this can, can be done. And, and again, if I'm trying to close the, the circle I opened, these are four steps that I believe Israel can do, tomorrow should do, and it will begin the, the process of separation. Once uh, the, these steps will be successful, of course, we can build uh, another uh, stage of separation above them. Uh, you know, confidence building measures is mentioned a lot. I do not believe in acts that they are specifically counter building measures, that their purpose is counter uh, building measures. I believe in acts that they have their rationale, and the outcome of that is confidence building measures. And I believe that if uh, we will begin with those four uh, points I mentioned, first of all, the Israeli public, then the Palestinian public, then the international public will be convinced that yes, Israel does not want to, uh, uh, to rule the 2.8 million Palestinians that are living in the West Bank, and we do want to separate, and we do share the vision that in the future, we, there will be two states, Israeli on the one side and the Palestinian on the other side. So to conclude, I would say, it is our responsibility uh, to achieve an honorable, an honorable living for both uh, nations. And again, it will take time. We need patience. But if we want to start it today, nothing is getting better as we go along. Everything is getting more and more complicated once we do not do things that we can and should do today, and we delay them for tomorrow. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much for, I think, a very thought-provoking presentation, which I'm sure has inspired some questions and comments from you. So let's try to take as many as we can. As always, if you can keep your comments brief, that will allow as many voices as possible to be heard. And of course, if you can introduce yourself. I think you were first. My colleague has a second mic. Excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm Mahmoud Ismati from Afghanistan. Uh, thank you for a very interesting presentation. Uh, I, I'm not very much familiar with uh, Israel and Palestine crisis because I'm too young. <laughs> you have but, other problems. Uh, yeah, uh, but uh, I can make a point. Uh, you said that you decided to uh, join, uh, to be a politician because you realized that uh, uh, Israel is not going in the right direction, correct? Yes. Uh, can you briefly say that what is the right direction? For, for Israel. And also, uh, you said about uh, 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 without involvement of uh, policy makers, if I make it like this, is it possible to reach in a durable solution, for instance, through ordinary people between uh, Israeli community and Palestine, uh, uh, for instance, to seek their views what ordinary people recommend. To seek what, excuse me? Their views, what ordinary people recommend, and uh, what are uh, drivers of conflict according to them, uh, and how they can make or design a roadmap for peace. 
Thank you very much. If it's okay with you, I suggest we take a few questions at once, just to allow okay. as many voices to be heard, and then do the best you can. You probably can't respond to all of them, but let's at least collect and see where the interests are, and then we'll come back to you. Maybe we'll come to the front. Okay, or, okay, Thank first, you. and then, okay. Thank you. I appreciate the candid analysis that you have done, sir. Well, my question is in respect of um, two states. Uh, <clears throat> why the Israeli is thinking that a separate state will be good for them, and a separate state will be good for the Palestinians. Please, do you have an analysis of the land issue in terms of accommodation? Whether what you are thinking for the Palestinians will actually accommodate them. I mean, I understand that moving away from Gaza, we give them additional uh, land. But would that, in your own opinion, uh, at least satisfy them? I'm talking about land. Because fundamental to the issue of the separateness is the issue of land. One more question, maybe from a lady this time, to keep the gender balance, uh, okay? And then we'll try to do a second round as well. We'll come back, please. Uh, this is Lydia Jimenez. I'm uh, working at the University of Barcelona, and I have partners in uh, Tel Aviv University, and I was there last year. So it's a country I love. I love mostly more than the country, the people, let's say, in a kind way. My question is very simple, and it's not for me, it's for my, ch my child. I was with my daughter in the uh, Berlin Mauer last week, and we were taking pictures about the broken wall. And uh, she asked where it is here, people doing pictures. We say, just to remember. So the question was afterwards, uh, my, my husband said, yes, but uh, some countries are still doing walls, blah, blah, blah. And then uh, I would like you to give me a very simple answer to my child. What have we learned about Berlin Mauer? that could be applied to the next wall we are building in other countries. We have we learned something? And um, uh, when I, I took a picture of you, in, and I was thinking myself, maybe this will be a nice picture for the future, that the <laughs> wall that is being built has been already uh, open. So uh, just a simple question from a child who doesn't understand that we haven't learned anything. Thank you. Mr. Barlev, please. Okay, so uh, first of all, what is the right direction? So again, regarding uh, Israel and uh, the Palestinian issue, I believe that the right direction is to separate. And uh, as I said, uh, oh, I, I would say right, right now we are, we are living together. And, and we are living together, uh, and it gets m complicated from day to day. And we don't know where we Israelis begin and where we end, and we don't know where Palestinians begin and where, where they end. And actually, I, I think that what we, uh, uh, the, the last wave of terror is actually present, uh, presenting to us what means uh, one state for two nations, that one nation doesn't have uh, equal rights. Uh, so if I'm uh, connecting it to another uh, question, uh, why, why should we separate? We should separate because we are two different nations. Uh, and I think even in Europe, there were uh, areas uh, uh, former U U Yugoslavia and, uh, and other parts that uh, in the end it didn't work together. So, uh, so this, is, this is one reason. The second reason is that uh, the purpose of Israel, and it's maybe easier to say it here in Germany, in Berlin, the purpose of Israel is to be the homeland for the Jewish people. And in order to be the homeland for Jewish people, we need a clear Jewish majority. And again, in order to be a democratic state, the only way to remain democ democracy, real democracy, and 
to have a clear Jewish majority is to separate. Of course, there are ex extremists on both sides that think the opposite, that think that we should uh, uh, remain together because of all kinds of reasons. From the Israeli side, there are certain uh, re religious beliefs that maybe God will help us, and in the end, we'll be the majority. Well, this is not my way of thinking. Regarding uh, the internal uh, social economic issue in Israel, as, as I said before, uh, you know that there are those tables of the OECD. The OECD, Israel is, is quite leading in quite a few uh, positive parameters. Unfortunately, it is almost leading in the worst parameter. And I'm talking about uh, a, a, an updated table that was presented uh, 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 several days ago in Israel. And this is the gap between rich and poor. Only, only Mexico is worse than us. Mexico is in the bottom of the, of the, of the OECD table, and we are the one before last. And there is no reason to it. And again, as I said before, when I, b before I uh, joined politics, one of the uh, things I did uh, uh, in this NGO is to give a better chance to youngsters that are not close to the, uh, that they don't have the connections. And they are not part of the core uh, leading economical uh, uh, people in Israel. Because I believe that uh, we should give better chance to different people. And it doesn't matter if I was born in a, in a, a family that was uh, a, I think uh, my, my, my late father was mentioned, he was the chief of staff of, uh, of the IDF uh, uh, 45 years ago. And someone like me uh, grows up in a suburb, in another family, and maybe he or she is more talented than me. Why should he or she has a less uh, uh, a l a less pr probability in order to, uh, to achieve his or her potential. Regarding uh, what to, to say to your kid, I think that we should uh, understand that uh, the different, the, the, the different co conflicts around the world are, are very different one another. I give three, I'll give three examples. Over here, regarding the wall, two sides of the wall were the same people, and the regimes were, were different. But once the, one of the regimes, regimes the, the, the Eastern Bloc collapsed, collapsed, it was relatively easy to reunite the two uh, regimes because the people wanted to, to be uh, uh, with the, w the people on the east side wanted to be with the west side and vice versa. If I'm looking at uh, the conflict in Northern Ireland, over there, it was exactly opposite what we have in Israel. Over there, the issue was how the ca Catholics will be able to live with the Protestants and vice versa, without killing each other. In Israel, we want to live one beside the other without killing each other. So uh, there are different uh, types of walls, and, and it might be very dangerous to, 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 to try and compare them. But still, I believe uh, I'm an optimistic. If I want, wasn't an optimistic, I would, wouldn't go to politics. And uh, I believe that uh, uh, we will be able to, uh, I wouldn't say to break the walls between us and the Palestinians, because right now one of the issues that we don't have walls, 
and we and, and, and we are combined and there are differences as I said uh, re regarding civil rights and I believe that each people will have their uh, land and of course there will be ties between uh, Israel and Palestine there no, no no question about it that commercial ties and so on and so on and uh, that each one of us will have his uh, honorable uh, way of living. Okay, maybe we have time for one final question. We're actually, technically we don't have time, but you've uh, inspired so much interest here. I want to somehow try to allow at least maybe one more voice. The question is how, can you guys help me? Somebody's pointing in the back, so I guess you've been waiting patiently. So I'm trusting my colleague there. Uh, it'll also help us with the gender balance a little bit. And if you could please introduce yourself as well. The final question or comment. Thank you. Uh, I'm Yasmin from Kurdistan region in Iraq. Closer, I don't hear. Turn to the mic. Yeah. Yeah. I'm Yasmin from Kurdistan region, Iraq. Um, I've always listened to our Iraqis, uh, sorry, to Palestinians and Israelis, um, comparing our situation to them, the conflict between Kurds and Arab. As Palestinians see, um, they are suffering as us from the same uh, problems and Israelis always saying Kurds are similar to us suffering uh, and not getting their rights. What, what, what's the role of cultural diplomacy uh, to you, to Israel, and have, has Israel tried or approached Palestinians uh, in this regard? Um, I think the Palestinian side is not really trying cultural diplomacy. Is not really what? Is not applying or uh, approaching Israelis through cultural diplomacy to reach a solution. Whilst I've, I've met Israeli friends that they told me that there are in, uh, NGOs or institutions that are trying to get a solution uh, through cultural diplomacy, believing in that, believing that education uh, uh, can be a um, key or a factor to reach a, f a solution in the future. So. Can you get, just give me um, an idea how has Israel, Israel um, applied this uh, and what's cultural diplomacy to you and how, how can it apply it and get a solution in Israel? Thank you. So f first of all, I think we, we are two different cultures. And uh, Israel is a democracy and uh, however, I will think I'm right, as I mentioned before, I'm the opposition, <coughs> excuse me, I'm in the opposition, and I accept that the government, although it's leading a way that I think in, in, in quite a few uh, uh, areas is wrong, this is a democracy, and, 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 and the majority decides what to do. Uh, on the other side, the Palestinian, and again, I'm not objective, so don't, 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 don't expect that I will be objective. Uh, again, I don't know how much you're familiar with the Palestinians, but right now, Mahmoud Abbas is the president of the Palestinians. Uh, he was elected, I think, more than uh, 10 years ago. In the last 10 years, there were no elections there. He, he represents the Fatah. On the other hand, as I mentioned in uh, Gaza, the Hamas, which is a more extremist organization, uh, was elected. Uh, Mahmoud Abbas, the president of the Palestinians, did not visit Gaza for more than seven years, because if he, if he, he had done that, that would be probably his last uh, one-way uh, path, and even in Gaza, which Hamas rules, there are quite a few other fractions, as the Islamic Jihad and other fractions, that sometimes, because uh, of arguments between themselves, the Jihad, or even smaller fractions, are shooting rockets to Israel, because they understand that Israel will must uh, 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 fight back, and usually it's against Hamas. So really, 
it's very, very di difficult. And, 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 the, and, and from our point of view, one of the uh, main, uh, or maybe the main issue, is that uh, the other side, the Palestinians, this way or another, democratic way or another way, this is their decision, will have their leader that he will lead them and all other fractions will accept his leadership. And unfortunately, it doesn't happen. So it's very, very uh, complicated. And I'm sure if I was a Palestinian, I would have uh, probably uh, uh, criticism regarding Israel and so on. Uh, but this is the situation. So I believe, uh, I, I believe in a process uh, that we will begin, we are not probably able to do one big step which will, the end of this step will be a, a peace agreement and end of the conflict. Because we are so different. So that's why I believe that it's a process. The process will take years and we can be, begin at least the first step of this process right now. And again, assuming this will be successful, of course it, it, it might not be successful. And then we are in big trouble. But assuming it will be successful, if not 100%, maybe 60 or 70%, then we can build another, another a layer upon that. And this maybe relates to, to, cult to the cultures. We would not, probably not be able to convince one another that we are seeing things the same way. That's why let's begin a process that both sides will learn that the pro process is going to the right direction and is positive for both of them. And maybe by that, we will reach the understanding, although we come from different cultures. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, member of Knesset, Omer Bar-Lev. Thank you very, very much.